Hi, Ray Helio. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome back, everyone. Um, Thank you. Would everyone please stand and join us in the flag salute? Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back. Hope everyone had an enjoyable break. Um, we'll move right into the agenda, and I'd like to uh, get a motion for approval of the minutes of our last regular meeting on December 11th. I move to approve the meetings of the last meeting on December 11th, 2018. I second it. Oh, I mean my thing. I second it. All right. All in, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, move on to item B3, approval of the agenda and consent agenda. I move to approve the agenda with an amendment, and I also... Which is? Uh, I believe there was an error in the uh, gifts section. Um, in in uh, Superintendent Rigby's um, superintendent's report, she mentions a gift that it was received by the uh, district. However, it's not mentioned anywhere, and it's already been publicized, so it's proper that we should um, formally approve it as a board. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's, do we have? What gift are you referring to? Um, the money from the Carp Growers Association. Um, you, oh, you, We've not you, received it. But in your uh, superintendent's report, you you thank them for giving it to you. So and and there's a there's a photo in the coastal view of um, Gerardo Cornejo holding a check up from them. So it's appropriate that we should consider it um, as a donation under the gifts section, as proper and as uh, as seen with all other gifts. Uh, yes, it is listed. The gift was not from the carp growers. The gift was um, the donation is twelve hundred dollars from the Rotary Club, and that's listed under our grants. And donations, it's G two D. That's Kay. the same. Um, that's the same. I'm just referring to the to the superintendents of report that you wrote, which clearly state we can all look at it. The carp, you thank the carp growers for their donation. There's a photograph in the coastal view of the gift that you've received, and there's confirmation in the New York Times that they donated twenty eight thousand dollars worth of materials. Um, so it's really important that the board be given a chance to consider this important measure. Yeah. So let me clarify. There's been no $28,000 donation to the school district by the carp growers. So that was inaccurate. Secondly, as I said, I thanked the carp growers and the Rotary Club because the Rotary Club is making the donation to the schools. The carp growers are not. So that's the clarification, okay. and that's why this is accurate. So I move to amend the... Um, the agenda item just to include the word carp growers yeah. and rotary um, as as reflected in your own superintendent report that that makes it an accurate uh, depiction i, I, I think not. without without that information um you know I, I believe the donation maureen is from the rotary club to the district it's actually listed on the carp growers association website they have a photograph of mr cornejo receiving a check um, and so it is proper for us to acknowledge the carp growers as the as the givers of the gifts. That's that, that would, they're that, part of the Rotary Club. That, that seems like it would be. It, it actually says on the check carp growers. So and there's Mr. Cornejo receiving the check. This is on the website of the Carp Growers Association. I'm happy to hand that down. Um, but the so it's really important. Is not the accuracy the accurate? If you look at what we've attached to the donation, twelve hundred dollar check was received from the Rotary Club for the high school. So I don't know about a newspaper article. This is on the Carp Growers Association, the check that is being, this is also in the coastal view, and this is Mr., is this not Mr. Cornejo holding a check? So, so Ma Maureen, the, 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 I, I believe the, the, the really facts come down to whether or not we received a, ch who we received a check from. If the check was from the Rotary Foundation, that, that's a facsimile of a check. So, so the, the actual donation came from the Rotary, Rotary uh, Foundation. So if this were added, all we're doing right now is considering whether or not to add it as an agenda, to amend the agenda item to include 
Carp Growers Association. But you're basing that on a on a facsimile no, of a check I'm in a in a erroneous article it, in the newspaper. I'm basing it on um, uh, Ms. Rigby's <coughs> superintendent's report, which clearly states that uh, she thanks the Carp Growers Associations for their donation to the high school. So yeah. So here, here's, so, and there's here's Mr. The Cornejo holding a check from the Carp. I mean, I I don't think I'm making a crazy thought so, here. So, so if we just amend it no, to include here, Carp have, Growers Association, I have the receipt to the student body. Um, association of the Carpenter High School, right here. The, so the donor is the Rotary Club. So, so I think we should probably just stick to this amendment. I so we're either amending it or we're not amending it. That's that's the motion on the table, not a discussion of where the donation came from. It's not accurate. So but, but I'm just going on. I'm, but I'm I'm basing it on Miss Rigby's report where she thanks the carp growers for their donation okay. and for their gift to the Rotary and Club. Okay, so whether it came through the Rotary Club, it eventually came to us, and it was given by the carp growers. Can we confirm that? To the Rotary Club. Who gave it to us? The Rotary Club gave it to us. So the money, essentially, the cash was brought together by the carp growers. Who gave it to the Rotary? Is that correct? All I know is the Rotary Club donated the $1,200 check to the high school. Which came from the carp growers? Yes. Okay, so why I'm, all I'm asking is that we amend it to re to reflect facts. This is public record. For it's it, it's the public uh, record. We uh, already uh, have uh, Mr. Quinn. Uh, this uh, photograph was also uh, run yeah, in the yeah. coastal but view. Th that's, that's, that's fine, Maureen. Well, can, we actually have to a, vote on it. A, so I just can I get a I second on this amend on this uh, motion? Second. Any dis any further discussion? I just think it's really important that the public record, which includes the Carp Grower Association's website and uh, the Coastal Club. View, and the New York Times, which may or may not be accurate, all three of those places are, are saying that the Carp Growers Association gave the schools a donation. So if that's not correct, perhaps having it on the amendment, having it on the agenda formally would give us a chance to discuss it and then dispel that myth if it's not true or to thank them if it is the case, one way or the other. It's just well, creating but, but a public record of the facts. Well, but the facts, the facts are that that it, as I can understand them based on the information I have here is is you're purporting that carp growers gave money to the Rotary Club and the Rotary Club then in turn donated money to Carpentry High School associated student body which I have a receipt of that that donation right here in front of me then who then why is there a picture on the carp growers Association website of Mr. Cornejo holding a check and why was that run in the coastal view as Mr. Cornejo receiving a check from the carp growers? Enough from the Rotary Club. Uh, you'd have to ask them, I suppose. But Mr. Cornejo works for this district. He represents this district. He represents the high school. I, I, I don't, so I don't know. There's, I don't think there's a pr an issue with, with any of it. The, the money flowed through the Rotary Foundation. That's all we're approving right okay. now. Okay. There is, there is a problem with it, which is if you look at our gifts and bequests, uh, policy, which everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy because clearly no one has looked at this. Item number three, we are not allowed to, first of all, the governing board may accept any gift. So gifts have to be considered by the board. That's, Secondly, that's why it's on the agenda tonight. Uh, okay, but the provenance of the gift is questionable. And then number three, no gift can be, u can be accepted which promotes the use of violence, drugs, tobacco, or alcohol, or the violation of any law district or district policy. So if we accept this gift, which the Carp Growers Association are touting as a great PR move on their behalf, we are promoting the use mm -hmm. of drugs. Well, that's, that's no. what you mentioned and, uh, last time. Uh, the second point is that more it's more a violation of district policy because... Just um, take the vote. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, that, that's a very slippery slope to go down, Maureen. Do we take money from Island Brew? Yes. We do. Yes, we the do. The Carp schools do. We yes. Do. When's the last time we had a donation from Island Brew? Last spring. And it was on the agenda, and we yes, approved and it. Yes, we approved we've, it. We've, we've, we've received okay, money I, from Brinkham Then, then we were also we've in violation of that because no. we're not allowed to accept any gifts that, that, uh, that promote the use of drugs, tobacco, or alcohol. I, I think it's pretty clear we don't have a Budweiser Stadium. We, we don't, you know, even when that Island Brew are, check... Are, 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 the, are, are, you, are you seriously going to go down that road right now, Maureen? It, that you're going to deny, deny uh, benefactors in this community because you disagree with something that, that with their business. 
I don't want to have a discussion about this right now because all we're doing you is, a, is amending. Do. Is a I, I'm 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 shocked that you would you would you would bring this up in a public discussion, and and you would you uh, of all people who who who've been trying to find different uh, sources of revenue for this district who've come come up here and, and pro <coughs> proclaimed okay. yourself. Andy, I appreciate that you're that thinker. you're wanting to to create a bigger issue of this. I want the record to to reflect the facts. Which You're is that? Unbelievable. Which is that the district take, accepted the money vote. from yeah. the CARP take the Growers okay. Association. Okay. All in favor of the yeah. agenda and consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? So, we, we, excuse me, I'm confused. I amended it. So, are we voting on the amended agenda? Yes, we are. Okay. That was the motion that was set, was was made. I'm just and, I'm just seconded. checking in because there's been some intervening discussion. So so we're voting on the amended agenda. We're voting on the we're, we're voting on the only motion that was put forth. So the um, the with the amended to add the Carp Growers Association. If that to was that. your if that was your yes, motion. Yes, that, that was, was that was my motion. Okay. And it was seconded. So. Thank you. Did you get our vote? I didn't. I haven't voted it, yet. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't actually because no. I didn't know you what I was voting on. Didn't we all vote? No. I didn't oh, say did. yes or no because I didn't know what I was voting on. Okay, I, I did. I said all in favor, and three of us said aye. I, I didn't say. And no one I said nay. Nobody comes to these meetings anymore. Oh, well, welcome. <laughs> okay. So, are you in favor or opposed? Uh, I am in favor of the amended motion to include Carp Paleo? Growers Association. I agree with Marine. Are you in favor or opposed? In favor. Okay. Five to zero. Thank you. Wait, wait a minute. Five to zero. Yeah, we approved. Oh, okay, the, we okay. approved the agenda right. and consent right. agenda. You, you yeah, the we got our meeting okay. off the um, ground and here. And right. I, I was hoping to pull item and item from the agenda. Well, Is it too late? Too late for okay. that. Okay. Okay. Getting the year off to a big bang. Um, all right, we'll go on to D, public interest uh, report presentations and recognitions. Great. So again, we wish everyone a happy new year, and we want to remind everyone that tomorrow we welcome everyone back to school. So I'd like to begin with some recognitions from the high school. Principal Corneo would like to recognize the custodial, maintenance, and grounds department for continuing to provide a clean and safe environment for the CHS students and staff. And at RINCON, Principal Barnaby Gloger would like to recognize Marlo Stoops. She's our counselor at RINCON and Foothill High School, the academic counselor. And we're recognizing her for going above and beyond to help every student at the school to reach their goals. Whether it's finding success in the classroom, finding a job, or taking a step to improve a social emotional challenge, Marlo meets and guides each student towards success. And then at the middle school, Principal Shea would like to recognize Jennifer Foster. She's a math teacher at CMS for her kindness and willingness to go the extra mile to support all students in succeeding in math. At Canalino and Family School, Principal Pursuin would like to recognize the food service staff for their cheerful attitude with students. They decorate and dress up for holidays. And the most important part is they, stir, they serve student favorites like enchilada casserole, cheesy beans and rice, pozole, nachos, and pasta with chicken. And then at Aliso and Summerlin, Principal Fox would like to recognize the awesome special ed and intervention team, Jenny Aldridge, David Yazbeck, Amy Holstrom, Jamie Bickford, Renee Romero, and Jen Clark. This team does an amazing job of providing support to the students on a daily basis. Great. Thank you very much. Always good to hear all the good things going on with our staff. Yes. Okay, we'll move right into the superintendent's report. Thank you. So I'd like to continue our recognition and appreciation. And I'd like to recognize the excellent work of Deanna Zapata, who's here with us tonight. Deanna is the Human Resources Director, and she served as our lead negotiator for CUSD during the conclusion of the 1819 collective bargaining negotiations. And as you know, the contract has been ratified, and we will be discussing it tonight at the board. So thank you, Deanna, for your good work. Thanks, Deanna. I'd also like to share some information about the work we've been doing at the middle school in focusing on improving school climate. Uh, during December, two successful student events were held at the middle school to foster a positive school climate and to bring students together. CMS parent Rick Sharp worked with Principal O'Shea to organize a skateboarding competition on December 19th during lunch. Yes, it was a great article <laughs> was. In, the, in the Valley News, and um, the students loved it. 
So volunteers from the Lighthouse Skateboard Shop in Santa Barbara judged the skaters who demonstrated, and they were amazing tricks, on rails and ramps. So we had all the students out there enthusiastically cheering and celebrating their student skaters. And then on December 20th, the last day before the break, they, the ASB student leaders, supported by their teacher John Fowler, organized a wonderful winter fest for the after school holiday fun food and games. And we really appreciated the student leadership. It was fantastic. Additionally, um, Principal O'Shea and I have met with the AHA directors who are providing CMS teachers with professional development in the social emotional curriculum this year. And it was recommended that AHA expand their services to provide instruction in social emotional skills for seventh and eighth grade students once a week during spring semester. And that'll occur during the elective time for seventh and eighth grade students. And so the goals would be to strengthen student relationships across the uh, campus and across classrooms, improve student behavior, and continue to focus on improving the climate and to reduce bullying. So we, we appreciate that. And uh, uh, AHA has been working very successfully at the high school in the freshman class for the last 10 years. So we're thrilled that we're able to offer it at the middle school. Another training that took place was ALICE, which refers to Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. This training is a leading program for response to active shooters, school and workplace violence, and violent intruders. And CUSD Safety Coordinator Barnaby Gloger coordinated with Procor to offer the two-day training of trainers to the CUSD leadership team members and security personnel during the first week of January. So our goal is to provide all staff with this training this spring. So we will be, our next steps will be to discuss with the leadership team how to proceed and provide that training. And then uh, the article that Maureen was referring to was the article that was published in the um, CVN regarding uh, our gratitude for our generous communities. So I just want to uh, read a section of it that, again, to thank our communities. We're so grateful for the generosity bestowed on our schools from parents, community groups, and the citizens of Carpentry and Summerlin. Time, resources, and fundraising by parents and community members benefit CUSD students and schools on a daily basis. In December, we received funds from Sunset Rotary and the Carp Growers, which were raised during the Avocado Festival for CHS AVID students to tour three colleges in the Ronald Reagan Library. We also received funds from the Lions Club raised during the Festival of Trees to purchase new lab equipment for the new science labs at CHS. And additional funds were also received from La Centra Summerlin Foundation to support our school-based mental health services. Additionally, the parent groups at each school have raised between twelve dollars and $70,000 this year to fund classroom supplies, PE equipment and training, garden education, science field trips, special assemblies, promotion celebrations, teacher appreciation events, special student events such as after prom, ASB Winterfest, the year-end carnival, and library resources. And then at the high school, the athletic boosters continue to raise funds to buy uniforms and equipment for the sports team, and the agriculture boosters raise funds to support the FFA projects and field trips. Since school began in September, CUSD has received additional donations from the Santa Barbara County Bowl, Community Outreach Council in Summerlin, Anonymous Donor, AGIA, Village Properties, Westerly Floral, Caldwell Banker, and of course the Carpentry Education Foundation. The CEF volunteers have donated many hours for the past 26 years to raise more than $5 million to support, supplement, and enrich our CUSD school programs. This year, CEF generously supported the weekly K-5 elementary arts program for the first time since 2004, Chromebook carts for math classrooms <coughs> at the Carpenter and Middle School, and scholarships for CUSD graduates. In addition to these private donations making a difference for our schools and students, Many of the community groups and citizens donate volunteer hours in the classrooms, on the playgrounds, and athletic fields, or in specific programs. United Way, Girls Inc., Carpenteria Boys and Girls Club, Carpenteria Rotary Clubs, and the Carpenteria Lions Club all have provided staff or volunteers to support school programs. So again, I want to start the year of 2019 in acknowledging and recognizing with extreme gratitude the support we receive from our communities for our schools and our students and staff. Great, Absolutely. thank you, it's fantastic. And then the last item is so exciting. This is our Measure U update. The Gen 7 classrooms are coming for the middle school and high school. 
So the new, the new classrooms are ready for the middle school and our CMS students will be in them beginning January 14th. So the moving date is this week and this weekend. Um, for the high school, we have not yet determined the actual date, but it should be by the end of January. And then we still continue to plan for the next phase of the Measure U projects, and that's modernization of existing classrooms at Aliso, Canalino, and the high school. And we're anticipating construction to begin this summer. And the Measure U team is also working on coastal development permits for Main School and Summerland. And you will receive the fo annual formal presentation on the Measure U projects and the budget at our next board meeting. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, do we have any comment, Monica? No. Okay, move on to item E, board policies. Um, E1 is a vote to dissolve the policy subcommittee. Um, can I get a motion there? Subcommittee. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Yes. Um, I would like to ask Superintendent Rigby um, why, why the two members of the subcommittee were not asked or consulted or given any opinion about whether or not to dissolve the subcommittee. Yes. Um, I did s send you an email. Both of you I sent emails asking you to... Um, indicating that this is what was going to happen and that to call me if you had a discussion before the meeting regarding the agenda. So I didn't hear from either one of you. I did not so, receive uh, that email. Oh, yes, you did because you responded. I, I responded to your request for information, and I sent you the information you requested and added that uh, please note that in the agenda we're okay. making this recommendation. So well, why? why yeah, did, you, did you think it was... Uh, why, well, I'm just curious why you didn't... Because it was a, there's a part A and a part B. And uh, regardless whether we uh, replied to your email well, or not, uh, for instance, the decision and I, has been taken. Right, and, and the, the email wasn't, I'm considering doing this, or what would you think if I did this? It was, I'm putting this on the agenda, which I find incredibly disrespectful, again, because I, I work with committees all the time in the work that I do, and um, would never think of dissolving a committee without speaking to the people that were on the committee because I have such a respect for the time that volunteers as we are put in to continue meeting. Um, so just curious there. Well, okay. just, just, uh, just a little context. This, that last year was the first year we had actually this policy subcommittee. It was, this, it was started in August 2017. And just to clarify yeah. the record, um, so everyone's really clear, um, the, apparently, according to the material we're given, um, the, the policy subcommittee is being dissolved because it's not productive enough. However, I went back in my records, and um, it was started in August. We didn't meet till September. Based on my records, we've actually only, we met September, October, November, mudslide and fire, didn't meet, didn't meet throughout the spring, didn't meet again until September. So we've had about... Um, either nine or 10 meetings, and in that time we've passed 22 policies, which is approximately, we've had seven meetings and we've passed 22 policies thereabouts. So, which is fairly normal. Yeah, which is a normal amount. And, and the reason I think the subcommittee, I feel has been an extremely helpful piece is that it makes our board meetings a lot shorter in the sense that we have the, the difficult discussion that, that policy meetings should have. We have that meeting in you know an outside container we you know go through a lot of are they productive things. meetings Ex i found them extremely productive I'm because they've allowed for conversation around the policies and then you know working together we put our best foot forward bring that to the table and you know nine times out of ten it's just green lighted at the board meeting there's very little there has been very little discussion about the policies that have been brought forward and actually on the record uh Diana, you s this is what you said, that for the last 10 years, these uh, policies have not been updated. And uh, that, that's why this subcommittee, this policy subcommittee was formed. And uh, actually, everything was going well until last, last meeting on December 15th. And this is a part A. You have this. What, what happened on December 15th? Well, 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 this is what happened. 
uh, five minutes after the meeting, uh, our superintendent was uh, removed from authority. By who? By us, because uh, according to uh, the law. I'm so glad that the board policies are here, actually, because um, the board policies very clearly state how important policy is to our board. As our board, mm -hmm. it's one of, it's, it's, I was thinking about it last night, it's 45% of our job. 45% of our job is policy. The other 45% is budget. And then the last 10% is hiring and firing the superintendent. That, that's our work here on the board. So, um, you know, Ms. Rigby, kind of out, our, our process before that subcommittee had been to just bring, bring the policy to the board, do a first reading, bring it to the bo next board meeting, second reading, and then basically approve it. And the reason I found that, that process frustrating is because it allowed for very little actual productive conversation about how to improve those policies. People didn't seem to want to have a real discussion of kind of the nuts and bolts of the policy itself. And what I've discovered in the process of being on this subcommittee is that I really enjoy policy. I really, really enjoy it. And it's, it's, it's like reading law, you know. And because it's such an important part of the work that we do, you know, I, I'm happy. I, I think that it should be a policy, a, a subcommittee that keeps going, but one that rotates, you know. I'm happy to step off it and allow for someone else to be on it, but I think it's a subcommittee that should absolutely and, continue. Uh, and actually, Maureen was the one who ran the meeting last time. At last meeting, I actually said, this is the time when we should be looking at the board policy subcommittee, and, and I think it should be integrated into that annual calendar, looked at every December, and people should be able to step on it and off it, and it shouldn't be one of those ones that you stay on unless, you know, unless people really want to, but, but on the flip side, Roger and I have put in, you know, an additional hour every month. Um, in September, the meeting time was changed um, without our consultation, and so it was um, running the Wednesday after a board meeting, which I don't recommend. So my recommendation is that we continue the, the board policy subcommittee with some changes to it, which means, you know, a rotating group of people on it, if needed, or as needed, and making sure that the meeting time is a, is a Wednesday, but not after a board meeting day. And actually, I'm just going to give you just one example. I can give a lot. I can give you more, but just one, one example of how this. I don't know how the district actually uh, passed these uh, policies two, three, four, five, ten years ago or so. This is one of the policies that actually we changed. <coughs> the policy said that a sexual predator was allowed on school sites as long as that person didn't have any contact with children. How could that be? I don't How think could I, I, don't, I, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it next time. So, I will but bring Mahalia, the, all, the, all these policies time. come from no. come from the CSBA. Well, no, uh, no, that's not true. Actually, the um, actually, they come straight from the district. Yeah. So the way the no. policy, yes, yes. the they way get, they get updated, uh, they get no. updated actually, by the can CSBA. Can I clarify that really quick? So the way the policy has, or the subcommittee has worked, is that um, there has been a combination of policies that needed to be updated because of legal changes. We have one copy of right. that. And uh, those are pretty much like boilerplate, like we're just following the CSBA. And then we've also looked at a series, about every meeting I would say there's been at least one policy that's been kind of bubbling up from the community. For instance, my, my, the example that I'm most proud of is our, hope, is our work on, um, on suicide. So um, we have an organization in CARP called HopeNet which has done a lot of community work around um, students and suicide, which we've also had some sad experiences with. So HopeNet um, worked with us and, and provided us with some material. And so we have one of the most progressive um, suicide policies, I would almost, I would wager to say in the state, because they came in and really advocated for that issue. We didn't just take the CSBA boilerplate. And even with the CSBA boilerplate, we've really tried hard to kind of make small changes that were still within the legal framework that, that made those policies really reflect what was, what made most sense for our community. So I'm really, really proud of the work that we've done and, and would say it's some of the most proud work that I've done. Um, it's hard because there are disagreements 
and we don't all disagree. However, we're having those difficult conversations outside of this space and allowing you know, this process to continue and that process to continue. And I think they're really kind of part and parcel of the same I process. I would argue that uh, well, it would be better I, I, to have those no, discussions yes. in public. No, no, yes. actually, and, and well, <coughs> they are in public. Those no, are public I, I would, I would, I would argue that, that, we, that, that in the past, I mean, up until the last year or, you well, know, and it's, 15 months. And it's very scary we, just to think about toxic policies that have been there for years. Well, Imagine but, the liability. But, Rogelio, we have, we have not, we have not, uh, probably nobody knows about them because they haven't been um, viewed uh, or, or read for years. For years, we, 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 we haven't seen any it. any additional policies as a result of this committee than we have in the past. We just have made changes to them that maybe are a little bit more progressive, as Maureen says, than than the normal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, CSDA progressive. Vote. I don't. I I would but say I, that I, hope I that policy was more in line with what our our community has struggled with student suicide. That was something that I, came, I agree, was up to I agree, but I think it's important to have those discussions in an open forum like this. Right, which is, so why, the, which is why all that information gets, the, the big picture gets hammered out in the policy session. And then well, it comes- Well, we haven't had those discussions. We haven't really had those. The, we basically, you, get, you two have given a report on the discussion. And uh, and then the board agrees or disagrees, and right. then we vote on it. And, 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 and actually, that, 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 that is point, why which is, that which is that because a previous, yeah, ha, ha, previous mean, to the has policy not has to be right. uh, abolished previous, yeah, on emotion. Right. Well, let's not talk previous, over each other. Previous to the policy subcommittee, my experience of being on the board was almost no discussion on policy. When I would, because I'm a word geek and a writer, I would try to influence the policy and make changes to it and make edits to it and there there wasn't a willingness within the full board to really go in there and look at nuts and bolts and make changes honestly i mean you remember andy i was not able to to well i, I don't want to get into the details you know, of that details i don't recall but there was well, I, 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 I just I know recall. there were a lot of a lot of there was a lot of minutia that was either redundant or superfluous to actual the topic at hand Okay, that you were, that so you had that's why the subcommittee was able to to have a space to deal with the very important minutia because basically how it works is that um, those policies become our legally binding contract with the community. So whatever we agree to in that <coughs> policy is what we are going to be held to. And if we're out of compliance either legally or for whatever reason, um, if we have bad policy, that's going to create some big problems and so along those lines I but think the committee doesn't do anything about bad policy it, uh, well, we, update, we update our policies as frequently so as I, I think, we can. I think 10 you're years? confused because um, in the policy well, subcommittee let's keep the snide comments well, to ourselves we were able reasons. we were able to look at we would consider five policies in a meeting which we wouldn't necessarily get through them all but we were able to do a deep dive into those in a way that we just we just don't have time to honestly we just don't have time to do it in the full board meeting i mean i was having to research i was sometimes printing out three different board policies from three different districts and comparing them side by side on just one policy i don't think there was a sink there was very few csba boilerplate policies that we just took and rubber stamp because we realized that there was you know our community is very specific and we wanted those policies to be the best, not just boilerplate CSBA, you know, covering the legal basis, but not necessarily reflecting our community. So the, the, the last piece I'll say is that um, to make this, to make this um, subcommittee the most effective, it has to be chaired by a, uh, by a board member, because this is our purview, this is our task. If you look in the board policies, I would disagree with well, that. If you look at the board policies, actually, it specifically says that. actually, and it says it in here, which um, the board or superintendent uh, shall identify the need for the new policy, but as and as needed, the superintendent shall gather fiscal and other data. Um, but it's really the board that that has the final say on these policies. Okay. Well, if, if we any further discussion, we have a motion and a second on the table. On Miss Green, did you have a? Comment or Mrs. Green. Mrs. Green, sorry. Um, yeah, I think these four policies have come down from the state and have been in existence in this district for a number of years. Um, they're they're pretty f specific, and we do have to follow them according to the law and the policies. Um, I don't. 
We do. We we do. But a lot of them, the the ones that we talk about, actually were completely. I mean, they haven't been updated, and a lot of them were out of compliance. And and all all the subcommittee was doing was making a recommendation. You understand that as the subcommittee is just trying to do extra homework in order to make our board stronger, to make our policies stronger. I would argue that nothing that we did made our policies weaker because ultimately they still came to the they still came to the um, to the full board and still were allowed to be discussed. And um, do you see what I'm saying? So. The boards, the full board still gets the final yes or no and can take out things and add things and make any changes they want. It's just the heavy lifting has been done outside of the group. And I really do think that it's made our, um, I can say this because I, I saw the before, which was very little discussion on policies, to the after, which I was every single policy we were having at least, we were all reading it together and considering it together. And I honestly don't know why that would be a problem to read to read the material we don't have time as a full board if, imagine trying to look through a policy together and discuss and it read it together and discuss it i mean there's no way we we just wouldn't have time but the pol- the, the c- subcommittee gave us the time to do that which was amazing all right so we have a motion uh to vo- uh to dissolve the policy subcommittee it's been seconded uh without any further discussion i'd like to take a vote all in favor aye aye Post? Nay. Nay. All right. Thank you. Move on to item E2, um, administrative regulation <coughs> and, ex- excuse me, <coughs> and exhibit 1312.4. That's uh, the Williams Uniform Complaint Procedures and Community Relations first reading. I move to approve the administrative regulation and exhibit 1312.4, Williams Uniform Complaint Procedures Communications Relations first reading. Second. Any discussion? Yes, this actually was one of the three um, policies that we conti- that we discussed and uh, brought forth for today's meeting. So it's interesting that we've just dissolved the committee that did the work to bring this to the table today. Actually, all three. Uh, the, we, we went through three policies, yes. and they're, they're mm-hmm. all they're, they're all, all here. here. So that's yes. interesting. And the reason why it's here is because. Uh, you'll recall that uh, California no longer has the high school exit exam. So in our former policy, we had information related to that high school ex- exit exam. So when we went through our federal monitoring program, they identified that our policy was out of compliance. So that is the section that has been removed. Those are the only two sections in the old policy that have been removed for this new policy, which is why we've updated it. It's section number four in the old policy. All right. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item E3, Board Policy and Administrative Regulation 5145.13, Response to Immigration Enforcement. First reading. I move to approve Board Policy and Administrative Regulation 5145.13, Response to Immigration Enforcement. First reading. Second. Any discussion? So, did you see how much discussion we just had? <laughs> That's what I'm anticipating moving forward without this board policy subcommittee. Otherwise, it would have taken probably at least half an hour. Yeah. So the reason why this policy needed to be updated is that um, last year we had a new law, Senate Bill 31 and AB 699, which mandates districts to adopt policy consistent with a model policy that des- was developed by the California Attorney General that is related to the district responses to any request by law enforcement for access to information, students or school grounds for immigration and for enforcement purposes. We're one of the first districts in Santa Barbara County to develop the policy in relationship to this law. So this is actually uh, directly from CSBA because we've had, we do not have a current policy in place. So we are using the template from CSBA because it has been vetted by their attorneys. Great, thank you. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, item E4, uh, Board Policy and Administrative Regulation f- one, sorry, 6142.1, Sexual Health and HIV AIDS Prevention Instruction, first reading. 
I move to approve board policy and administrative regulation 6142.1 sexual health and HIV uh, AIDS prevention first instruction for or prevention instruction first reading. Second. Any discussion? Um, I believe the reason this was brought in front of us uh, was to deal with the lack of information being provided to middle school students. Is that correct? Correct. Well, it's a little bit more um, involved. And as, as you recall, in 2015, they passed the California Healthy Youth Act. And so our current policies do not reflect the current information from that Healthy Youth Act. And um, Maureen and Rahelio are absolutely correct. It's directly related to um, family life education, sex education, and HIV prevention, which is very explicitly spelt out how it needs to be instructed in the schools, in the public schools in California, especially in middle school, seventh grade, and high school. We have a high school health class. We do not have middle school health, so that's what we're working on. But regarding to our policy, you'll see there's about two or three pages in this new policy that was not incorporated in our old policy. Specifically, the whole definition section was not in our old policy. And also, the uh, general criteria for instruction and materials in, our new, in the new policy, it's very explicit about how we respond to teaching um, sexuality as a normal part of human development, as well as HIV prevention. So that's why um, we needed to update our policy, is to reflect the law of the California um, Healthy Youth Act. So I have a question, Dana. So we, we went over, let's say, 22 uh, policies. How many more are there left that are updated? That uh, need to be updated? Yes. Oh, the, whole, pol the so, whole policy here. So that are, yeah. uh, I mean, that are uh, out of, then the it, all of them are out of compliance. Yes. It's a continual process. No, it's really. something you do every, yeah, you, all the every time. year. You do it every year all the time. There, you'll never be updated. Yeah, now there just won't be as long to discuss it. There won't be as much time to discuss these things. Okay. Okay. So, so that's why we have this new board policy. Great. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item uh, F, educational services, and item F1 is a service agreement with EduClimber Software. Can I get a motion? I move to approve EduClimber Edu Software service agreement. I will second that. Okay, any discussion? Yes, um, you'll recall that when we had the WASC accreditation, um, the high school reported that one of the recommendations is that the district needed to consider a software system to monitor progress for students. In addition, the elementary um, department chair, excuse me, the elementary grade level teams have been talking about um, their use of a system that they used four years ago. And since four years ago, we've not had any kind of um, monitoring or tracking system to monitor student progress, which they found very difficult with the assembly of all of their assessment data. It's really difficult to manipulate that assessment data and to um, make decisions about how to provide intervention when they don't have a system to track all that progress for the students. So uh, Illuminate is a very uh, common software package that's used in many districts. And um, this particular uh, software package, EduClimber, it tracks, stores, and monitors, and reports all of student performance results, both high stakes testing, state testing, as well as interim assessments and district designed assessments. So we're interested in purchasing this. We have grant money uh, from low performing uh, schools, grant money this year to uh, purchase the software package. And our data teams are very excited about Well, this is the, yeah, it. I mean, this is, we have this discussion I think back in uh, November in regard to the test results we've yes. seen and we had no way to correlate that to that cohort in in previous grade levels yes. so I think this this should allow us to or will allow us to do that correct yeah. Yeah. more importantly the um, grade level teams have been asking for this yeah. and as well as the, with the high school um, accreditation report so we'd like to respond with here's a system that's uh, pretty commonly used throughout the state and would like to try it in Carpinteria. Okay. How about so question on this? The district has been trying uh, all technology, all software services, and still scores are low. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I mean, isn't that, I mean, 
Aren't the scores supposed to improve with technology? No. Why not? No. Then no. Um, student performance improves with the improvement of um, teaching. But with still, instruction. I mean, I I everything is related to that. Yes, and we want to support our teachers, and our teachers have requested well, some resources in terms of software that will help them be able to analyze student test data and student performance data and to track progress. So we want to respond by supporting our teachers. But yeah, I understand that, but uh, last board meeting you said, well, the, this material didn't work. We are going through, we went through another one. This one didn't work. And then Marina asked, well, what if new te technology, new material doesn't work? Then uh, you said, well, then, uh, then, then we'll see. I, this is what I've seen. I've said, I mean, it could be money that comes out of the budget. It could be money that comes out of grants or, but still, for years, I haven't seen the improvement that uh, I expected, and I'm but, talking but about. But Rogelio, th th this was a this was a direct recommendation from our WASC accreditation to to um, purchase some sort of software system in order to be in compliance, so we could maintain our WASC accreditation. So that that's the only, that's the reason we're purchasing this, and in, in in addition to to staff's desire to have some sort of sort of. Uh, um, software package to correlate uh, data so that they could track students from year to year, yeah, but which, so we, don't, which we don't currently so have. What, what if it doesn't work? That's the question that I have. So, well, this doesn't directly um, affect student performance. This assists teachers. This is not a learning tool. Th this, is, this is an administrative tool to support teachers. It's a resource for teachers to track student progress and make some decisions based on student uh, progress. It's related. Well, it's, it's, well, it's uh, apples uh, and oranges, uh, really. So, um, so my question, kind of along, I think what we're all trying to say is that we all want students to achieve better. Yeah, of course. And they've, I guess we've performed so badly that we've gotten a block grant to, to improve ourselves. So mixed blessing there. How much money did we actually get for that? $95,000. $95,000. Okay. So this is a relative kind of drop in the bucket relative to that larger piece of the pie yes we're using most of the funds to support teachers intervention teachers and professional development for teachers so I believe that the point that I made um, when mr. Cornejo made his um, site uh, his his presentation on uh, the high school was he was complaining because there's a gap between when students are tested and the data and I was trying to say, well, wouldn't it be great if there was a way to record, capture the data so that there isn't that gap? So we can be tracking the students mm -hmm. year by year and making sure that, oh, this guy had a you know, bad year this year. Let's make sure and get them some extra tutoring and extra assistance. So is that what this? Yes. That's what this does. Okay. Um, I, you know, the only, the only comment I have is, is that um, I would have liked to have seen that information about the WAS grant in, in this info sheet. Because um, we haven't gotten the report yet, it, it, they're going to present that report. No, 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 not the WASC report. The background information about why this was needed would have been really helpful. Because the questions I wrote here are like having to find out that it was ninety-five thousand um, dollars, and and the question I have, which I'm going to keep asking, was what facts or research were used. Um, to see if this could help and what problem is this trying to solve so I think those are two questions that we should ask when we're spending money because sure. right yeah. we're the arbiters of the the pocketbook mm -hmm. right so our money is becoming more limited and our improvement is going down so we really need to get fact-based and research-based and say what are we not, not we can't just throw money at everything but we do have financially we have a little bit of an opportunity to make some Improvements. If I had known that WASC had recommended this, had, did they recommend this specific software? No. What they recommended is that you need a software system that tracks the progress of your students. One way or another, that that piece of information w is kind of critical to helping us make the decision about whether to approve this or not. I think well, I think it's more important. Excuse me. Go ahead. I just said I think that was given in. I was before I was on the board, but listening to them when all the teachers and the principals were here indicating they needed this kind of software. No, no, Mr. Cornejo wasn't saying that he needed it. He was it saying... Was discussed he, in the meeting that a software like this was needed mm -hmm. to help track improvement of right. students. Uh, Ms. Pursoon mentioned it specifically. Mr. Cornejo said, well, it's too bad that we don't have some, you know, that, that 
that we lose track of students. He wasn't saying. Anyways, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is understanding that it's a direct recommendation coming from WASC holds, to me, more weight than just saying, here's another software, let's try it. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that we currently in our district do not have a system that tracks progress of students. And that makes it extremely difficult for teachers and grade level teams and departments to be able to determine what types of interventions they are going to provide if they can't track the progress of how those interventions have worked. So I think more importantly is that teachers are asking for this resource. And why now and not let's say two, three, four, five years ago or so? Well, actually. They had a system well, wait, four we years ago. We had, we had a system. You had a system four so years again, ago. What happened? The, the state changed the rules. The, the, we used to have, have star testing where you could track students year after year after year and then the, the, when, when Common Core was implemented the whole, the whole testing regime had changed and, and they didn't <coughs> implement a, tra <coughs> excuse me, a tracking program before they implemented a new testing regime and so it left districts with an inability to, to, to really see how their students were performing year after year and, and we've been wanting to do this for you know for probably four or five years now but but it's been difficult because the 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 bar keeps changing and and you know it, it it's it's i'm glad that that we're finally getting off the ball and doing it but but um i i don't i can't see why there would be any opposition to to spending eleven thousand dollars to help our student our teachers track the performance of our students better it's actually like 18 because these two pieces go together so you can't have one. Is that, isn't that correct? If these two, and these two softwares go together? Uh, they go together, but you can buy one without the other. Okay. And again, I, I would like to point out that it's not for the student's use. It's for the teacher's use. They're, they're tracking all the state testing and the testing. And that's compiling to improve scores, correct? They're compiling it into data that they then look at that data and look at each, see what the data says about each child and change the teaching methods for each of those children. It's not the kids that use this, it's, the, it's a teacher data collection system that will help them improve their teacher's teaching to hopefully improve scores. I hope they improve pretty soon because I, I've been waiting for scores to improve for years. My last question is just um, what, what was the process for deciding on this particular software? Uh, we worked with our grade level chairs at the elementary level and our um, secondary department chairs and we um, identified what most districts were using and looked at several products and this was the one that was most uh, commonly used in um, Goleta, Ventura Unified, districts around us. Okay. Because um, actually, because F2, it says at the end, uh, seven... Uh, well, we're not on F2 yet. We're okay, still on F1. Okay, so, so if there's no further discussion on F1, uh, I'd like to take a vote. So all those in favor of approving the service agreement with Edgy Climber, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item F2 uh, is a software service agreement with DNA uh, for $7,600. Um, can I get a motion? I move to approve the DNA software services agreement. Second. Any well, discussion? Yes. Yes, our secondary teachers are particularly interested in this piece of software because it has interim assessments already developed in the core areas, content core areas that are related to the common uh, core standards, specifically at middle school and high school, so they can provide interim assessments and not wait for the high stakes test results. So during, during a semester of biology, they already have a bank of test items in which they can develop their interim assessments and then um, provide additional support for students who are not making the progress that they expect during the semester in that course. So that's why this is particularly interesting to our secondary teachers. Our elementary teachers, we pretty much have all, all of our own assessments, but they are interested in this software in terms of being able to report and produce um, standards-based uh, report cards. So they're interested in looking at that application. So it's, it's, 
it's it's going to be used in conjunction with edu climber so it's just kind of it, they're not sold together it's just it's like a it's just Oh, that's what it says here. DNA will be used in conjunction with, yes. with so conjunction. Yes. The point that they're making is that um, when you use the interim assessments in DNA, you can track that progress through EduClimber as well. But districts purchase one or the other or both. You don't have to buy both at the same time. We're trying to meet the needs again of what the teacher leaders have requested. Uh, I'm also just very interested in this $95,000 block grant. When, when was that? When did we get that? Uh, this school year. In the fall? Yes. And by the Department of Ed or? Yes. Department of Ed. And have we, does it have, does it have a um, account number yet? Have we used any of the money on it? Yes, it's all been allocated. Okay. What's the account number? Just so I can check it out moving forward. If you don't know, it's okay. You can get back to me later. Well, it's resource 7510, but there's several account numbers. There's not one account number. Oh, but it's not coming from general fund. But that's no, it's asking. a grant. Grant, right. So does it right. have and an it's assigned? Been given, it's, it's available. It was in the governor's adopted budget, available for all districts across the state. It wasn't a competitive grant that we applied for. It was an entitled grant. But only for low-performing schools? No. It was based on student performance. performance. So it, there's basically every s district in the state got part of this grant oh every district got some okay okay so, so the last sentence of f2 it says agreement cost is 7600 and will be paid with the law performing schools block grant what does that mean that's that's what maureen just asked about that's the block so we got ninety five thousand dollars um that but apparently was given to all districts and so it, actual law performing school districts, correct? But it was based on student performance? I, I, I actually am a little confused. The myself. title was given by the governor. It was just a title. It's given based on student performance in every school district and that criteria doesn't match uh, necessarily your CAS low performing. So it's, it's a compilation of data that they take out of your CASP and your CALPADS and they it, it's a per pupil entitlement that every district gets. Whether so the or not state they're low performing, but or it's not about the school low performing. That's what the grants called. This it's based on how many low performing students you have. Right. So only districts that had low performing students got it. Right, but the threshold for that low performing is a standard. It's okay. not. We don't determine that. So every every district was entitled to it, but not every district probably got it. You can go on the CDE website and okay. see every district. Okay. All those in favor of approving the uh, service agreement with uh, DNA software? So, Aye. Yeah. Aye. 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 Okay, moving on. Uh, F3 is, a, uh, is the AHA CMS uh, 2019 spring proposal. Can I get a motion to approve? I move to approve the AHA Carpentry Middle School 2019 spring proposal. I second the motion. Any discussion? Yes, as I indicated earlier in the superintendent's report, AHA has been working with our teachers for professional development at the middle school to help teachers integrate social emotional learning in the curriculum on a, a daily basis. And so we met with the AHA directors uh, this uh, the principal of the middle school, Lisa O'Shea, and myself met with the directors to check on the progress of the professional development and the responses from the teachers and the work they were doing. And at that time, we discussed a proposal that was similar to what they were offering at the high school, and that is to be able to work with our actually directly instruct our students at the seventh and eighth grade levels once a week in actual social emotional learning curriculum, which we're excited about. And we were so um, grateful to receive additional fundings from the Summerlin Foundation that could support um, increasing the services of AHA so that we could provide the direct social emotional learning curriculum at the for students. So that's what this proposal is about. We also have donations from the middle schools so none of the funding will come from the operating budget. It'll come from donations at the middle school and the $10,000 additional grant we received from the Summerlin Foundation. Great. Any further discussion? 
Um, so we we don't have the money lined up yet, or we do? We ha we have the funding, yes. From the Summerlin Foundation, La Centra Summerlin. Summerlin Foundation, and donations that were already received at the middle school. Is that the middle school parents group? Well, well, it's a middle school donation account that we've had for years and years and years. Okay. Um, um, I just want to say I, I think uh, AHA is a, a fantastic organization. Mm -hmm. I wish that they were facilitating our board retreat or whatever you want to call it. Um, they just, they're able to help the participants look at really challenging and complicated things in their mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. in a fun and very inclusive and, and experiential way. And um, just a little side note too, they started, they, they, they kind of really worked on their um, I don't know, methods at Carp High is where they yes, did a lot of their yes. original work. So mm -hmm. we're lucky to have them here and mm -hmm. we're, I'm delighted to see that they're extending their work to the middle school where I think our school, um, what do you call it, climate reports have really shown that there's a big, big need for this. So I, I'm glad to see that they're going to be doing further work there. Yes, and we're hoping, um, as you and I have talked about, Maureen, is that we eventually can have a Peace Builders Club at the middle school. Right. So this, this is kind of the beginning for that. Good. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Move on to item G, business operations, facilities, and warrants. Uh, warrant, we're being asked to approve warrants for the period of uh, December 6th through January 3rd in the amount of $1,293,418.29. Can I get a I move to approve the warrant. I'll second that. Any discussion? Um, I did have a few questions if I can find it. But if not, we can just move on. Uh, my overarching question is just, and I feel like I've asked this before, or maybe, but maybe I just haven't been clear, um, which is, what is the amount that is necessary? What, what is the amount that kind of triggers um, an amount being put on the agenda as a separate item? Well, all pay warrants come to the board. Uh huh. Uh, Purchase orders over 5,000 come to the board for approval. Okay. That's in board policy. Uh -huh. Is that what you're asking? Purchase orders. And so what about uh, contracts? Uh, contracts also uh, go to the board if they're over $5,000. And some contracts come to the board um, as a, a process of principle. Depends on the contract. So, because there, here there's a Newton construction management for $90,000. I don't know if that's one that we've already approved. We have. But, okay, so that one. Um, that was for Lisa. There's also one here for um, that's coming out of the general fund, $8,400 for a concession stand. Can you tell me what page you're on? Sure, this is the uh, first page, 12-6-2018, JNL. That's glass, glass replacement. That's repairs. Okay. So repairs that are over five thousand dollars don't have to go. No, that did come to the board. Yeah, we approved it. it. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just a few. This is the payment. So, so this so may have. Some of these could have gone to the board even last spring. Mm -hmm. It depends on when the services are performed or concluded. That you see, and you'll see multiple payments and at times on a contract. So we've we've already approved everything that's on this. That's not always the case. Board. That's not always the almost, case. Almost. I'm pretty yeah, sure that's why is. I'm just checking. So this prop, the, the big one that caught my eye, and probably it was an oversight on my part, but 12-13-2018, which is Prop 39 Energy Efficient for $300,000. That was that went to the board. That came to the board as part of okay. Measure U. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As part of Measure U. Yes. And then one last piece. Um, I had thought that our Apple TVs were being purchased as part of Measure U. And that did come to the board also. But it's, it's taken out of the general fund account here. Can you tell me what page you're on? Sure. That's uh, page five. Twelve twenty Apple Computer, O one dash four four zero zero. Uh, five of seven you're looking at? Uh, the date is, uh, yeah. Oh, the page number, five of seven? Page oh. five, 12-20-2018, Apple Computer. 
for 570. So this is not the Measure You Apple TVs. Oh, okay. Which Apple? These are. This is a single purchase. This is a, a an off purchase for for other. This is not for new classrooms. That's, you're Measure talking you about are all for new classrooms. Seventy eight dollars. Yeah, I had thought that all of our Apple TVs, because we not this not this not in the fall, but previously there had been a measure you purchase of various equipment, not for new classrooms, for existing classrooms. So that, that e there was a major purchase to put technology in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. There is still, there are still um, circumstances where sites have decided to get a TV <coughs> or technology in a classroom not being used for instruction or into the office or into the library. So they're going to be off purchases based on the site's needs. Okay. Okay, any further discussions? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, item G2, gifts, grants, and donations. Item uh, G2A is a donation from La Centra Summerland Foundation to Carbon Unified School District Mental Health Program in the amount of $10,000. Can I get a motion? With, um, I approve the I make a motion to approve the donation of La Centra Summerlin Foundation to Carpentry Unified School District Mental Health Program. With thanks. Second All right. Thank you very much. Any discussion? All, Just all. very glad to have the funds. Yes. Absolutely. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item G2B, grant from Target, grant from Target to after school program at Aliso Elementary School. The amount of a thousand oh, from target, target stores, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. in the amount of thousand dollars to the after school program at Aliso. I motion to approve the grant from Target to ASB. Can I get a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item G2C is a donation from Carly Bass to CMS teacher Kelly Flores. <coughs> Can I get a motion to approve? Move to approve. Can I get a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Item G2D, donation from the Rotary Club to Carpenter High School in the amount of $1,200 to CHS for AVID college trips. And this has actually been amended. Correct. So uh, I move to approve the uh, donation from Rotary Club and CARP Growers Association. That was the amended uh, okay. yeah, motion that we passed in the beginning. Okay. I'll second that. Any discussion? Yeah, all of them. Um, yeah. yeah, I just, I, I feel like it's really important to have a discussion about things that are seen as potentially controversial within our community. Um, as I have shared um, at this meeting, at, at a previous meeting, um, I do not support money whether indirectly or directly from cannabis growers at the moment for two for at three reasons moment. for three reasons yes at the moment for three reasons it's a time or place time and place kind of question um, right now cannabis growing is not legal federally we are a body that has that is under federal jurisdiction so in preparation for tonight's meeting I was just curious you know have there been uh, people, individuals, or organizations that have been gotten caught in money laundering charges dealing with legal cannabis, and there have been. So there's, there's I, I found at least two examples in a very short search of people who were um, purchasing marijuana legally, um, but it is considered a federal crime. And so that's why the banks, as I, you, some of you may or may not know, but banks are not allowed to accept cannabis money because similarly to public schools they have federal jurisdiction so that's why I'm saying this is not the right time because from a federal point of view there is a chance this could be seen as money laundering and and why do I know that this might be an issue because um, you know we're can carpentry has a lot of cannabis issues right now and I have the complicated situation of having a cannabis grower um, decided to start developing the property literally right next door to our house. Oh, sorry. So um, uh, it's an all-cash operation, and that—that's just—that's just, that's just a. 
Absolutely not a personal issue. Okay. This, is a, this is not a moral issue. This is not a personal issue. We do not allow... What happens if a student goes to school wearing a, a shirt with a pot leaf on it? That, they get sent home. You know, do we allow cannabis <coughs> on our school sites? No. So it's a time and a place we do not have. We do not have our stadiums are not, uh, you know, our, our, our jerseys, our, our, our sports teams are not sponsored by, um, by alcohol or tobacco companies. We don't have the Marlboro, you know, d Maureen, guys I, giving I, us I big donations. We, we, the and school district the, the last the point that I want to make is that um, the, the, the people who this benefits the most is the Growers Association, who's already jumped on this opportunity for some positive PR. Um, not to mention the fact that it directly violates our own, like, why do you think that, that in our <laughs> board policies there, there is a specific uh, line item pulled out for violence, drugs, tobacco, or alcohol? Because they anticipated this. You know, the next one is that um, it's, it's we can't accept your, gifts your, that imply endorsement. Excuse me. No, but you're convoluting the, that, the, that. The gifts, it says um, that, Maureen. that um, we cannot accept gifts that imply endorsement. We cannot accept gifts that imply endorsement of any business or, or product or unduly commercialize or politicize the school environment. When the Growers Association uses us for a photo op, it's, this all reminds me of like an, The Onion or Saturday Night Live. Like, I don't think I could have made this up two years ago. But this is where we're at, and well, and, I, an, and I it appreciate. Sound like it was an issue and until I appreciate it started being developed right next to your house. And I appreciate the thought behind this. I really appreciate the impulse of the cannabis growers to want to give back to our community, and I hope that they do eventually when this becomes federally legal, mm -hmm. and banks are allowed the to do business, and they can write us a check directly. Maureen, they don't have so, to so go the through. School board so is not the last the point, the last point that the I want to make. Legality of, of cannabis growing. It, I'm not. This, it's this, already legal, so we don't have to argue it. Well, not according to you, it's not. So I'm so not. If I'm not. We're opposed to this whole this whole so industry. The we last should have made an effort to to fight this when it was on the ballot three years ago. The point that I want to make is that uh, this is not. This is not the right time. The final point that I want to make is that the cannabis growers themselves have not proven themselves to be great friends of the community in terms of their smell nuisance. If you, if you Google Carpinteria and Carpinteria High School and cannabis, you get a whole lot of articles about the high school and how badly it smelled and teachers having to air out their classrooms. In addition, you know, I think if the cannabis growers had come to me directly and said, hey, how can I help the schools? Do you know what I would have said? I would have said, why don't you voluntarily create a 10,000 foot setback among your growers and, and, and not grow near any houses or schools? Because it's right. Two miles? Two miles? They could have voluntarily taken measures to prove so themselves to be good neighbors. In the Valley is but not honestly, two miles in, in by having a $1,200 check that is funneled through the rotary, then to us, the biggest winners from this are the pot growers. Or AVID. I, I would say AVID in the, in the middle school is, really? is, a, is a, the big winner from this, Maureen. It's all, I mean, if, if, if we truly are up here to benefit our children, then, then I, I, I think you're looking at this from, from a, a too, too personal a, a, an aspect. Okay. Uh, so how many schools in California have taken donations from pot growers? I have no idea. None. None. That's according to the New York Times reporter that I spoke with who was interviewing me about the smell of cannabis in Carpentria. He said, wow, your district's taking a, a, taking a donation from a pot grower? Let me know how that goes. Because literally he covers the West Coast and the state of California, and he's never heard of this. Why? Because I think districts like Hope School District, Montecito Union District, Santa Barbara Union, they've talked to their lawyers, they've talked to their legal teams and understood that maybe so, so it doesn't Maureen, give the I best think, optics. I think rather than get yeah, into so, this. So our, can may I just say that yeah. we have talked to our legal counsel. And our decision to accept the check from Rotary is totally within the legal guidelines. Our check is from the Rotary. That's what this. But if it had been said. directly from the pot growers, it wouldn't have been legal. We didn't do that. Okay. And I can add that as long as I've been involved with the Carpentry Education Foundation, which is about 24 years, we have always accepted donations from um, citizens in Carpentry and outside of Carpentry that filter through CEF as a nonprofit 
because they actually don't want to give monies to the district because then it's not used as a write-off. So for many years, football stadium, kitchen at the high school, all kinds of things, money comes through CEF and then filters into the um, school district. And that's exactly what happened with this check. You got a check so, from Rotary yes. that is then filtered back into the school district. Maureen, bef before we, you know, I, I don't really want to get into this anymore, but I think you, because you like research, you ought to go look at Colorado and the communities in Colorado who, 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 who embraced, because it's beyond our control to, to, to say pot is legal or not. It's not, it's not our purview. But the communities that, 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 in, that accepted the, the money or didn't accept the money, they, they're all stuck with the issues. But one of them has the money and one of them doesn't. So the monies are being collected by the county right now. So any, all the pot growers in Carpinteria are, are in county jurisdiction. Um, just FYI, it, it's just a note. Uh, the cannabis growers do not appear to be living on, I mean, some of them might be, but, you know, in five years, when smell issues and other issues have been worked out, and the cash issue has been worked out, and the security issues have been worked out, you know, there's a good chance that these could be, the growers could become community partners. But uh, right now, it is not federally legal. And, and it's just a cash, it's a legal situation <coughs> around the cash, dealing with cash that, frankly, banks won't even touch. All right. So all those in favor of accepting the donation from the Rotary Club to Carpentry High School, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'm opposed to the motion, which was f to accept the money from the Rotary and the Carp Growers Association. The money is actually coming from... But the amended motion, to clarify, includes the Carp Growers and the Rotary. So I'm opposed, opposed to that. To I'm opposed to accepting the donation from the Carp Growers and the Rotary. And Rogelio? Opposed. You're opposed? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, item G3 is the 2017-18 annual audit. So we have um, concluded the 17-18 review of the audit. Uh, the report was submitted to the State Controller's Office um, by December 15th as statutorily required, and it's before you tonight for approval. Um, it's a very standard audit. Um, I will um, point out just a few um, uh, findings that were in this audit, and normally we, you know, strive for zero findings. Um, but there were a couple of findings that I'll go over, and none of them had any monetary impact. Most of them are um, what I call kind of empty findings because they're on non-statutory items. It was things they looked for we didn't have. Um, some of it was a result of, um, it was right during the fire, there were records that had to be brought home, there was not access at the office, and, and some things just didn't happen um, perfectly. Um, the first finding is that we were um, a few months behind on concluding the uh, bank reconciliation for the middle school ASB account. Um, by the time the auditors came to visit us in October, they had all been caught up. Um, however, their preliminary review in June, they hadn't been finished, so it was nonetheless a finding. It's all already been corrected, and there's a plan in place to make sure that the middle school forwards to the district office information timely. Um, and then the uh, staff accountant is now doing all bank recs. It's not be it was being done uh, by the, the site, and we've pulled it back. Another finding was um, what they call a time card is not a time card. It, they're, they're saying that we had some missing time cards and they're actual employee notification reports that are sent out annually to all employees that basically give their pay status, their benefit selection, the accounting that they're, the account code that they're paid out of. They verify it, they sign it and send it back. Um, it's not easy collecting them all from every employee signed back and um, our current pr practice for probably the past, I don't know, maybe 15 or more years, was after the third time we send it, we, just, we, we, we quit trying. <coughs> so there were um, about four that were missing from all of our staff. Um, they noted that in the audit. Um, the best we can do is, you know, physically drive out to a school site and get an employee to sign the notification. Um, it has no, no 
significance other than it was missing. They're not necessarily required by law. Um, and the um, third finding was, was basically the same. Um, it just was a finding to an employee in a federal program, which is like a, a special ed aid. Um, so it became a separate finding. And one uh, time card was miscalculated in the number of hours paid, and that was remedied with, before the audit even occurred, but they noted that it was an error. Um, again, there was no monetary value placed on any of these findings. Um, the last finding was um, what they, can, they call time cards, but they're attendance reporting cards. That's kind of another double check of, of attendance reporting because currently at each school site, office coordinators electronically enter employees' absences into our escape system, and that is electronically sent into payroll, and that electronically um, takes away from their leave balances or does deductions, and those old time cards have probably been around since the 80s, and starting now, January 9th, when everybody's back or um, for the rest of the staff yesterday, we're not doing that at all. It's a paper step that was redundant. Um, it's just that the, the auditors we have have looked at it in the past, they looked at it again, and there were a couple of missing white cards, they called them. So no, no monetary impact at all. We did have a few findings from 2017 that they, they put in the audit uh, to identify whether they've been corrected or not. And just like the findings I went over, they are already corrected. They were corrected before their audit was printed. And one had to do, again, with a um, vacation balance that the system had fractionally miscalculated. And it was a setup, uh, system setup calculation that we couldn't control. The county office of education in uh, Santa Barbara had to actually do a programming. And it was a an error of a like 0 .004 of an hour. And that's the level that they go to. Um, and then the last finding was what we call a grade span adjustment. And were we an LCFF district, it would have had a, a financial impact, but we were not. Um, so LCFF requires and your OCAP requires that your grade span K3 average can't be any more than 24 to 1. And we were 24.22. So the state would therefore take that 0 .22 money back because you were over. 0.12. Um, what's that? that You're only 0 0.12 over if it's 24.1. Right. Yeah. So, so there was no financial impact to the district. Um, however, the law requires that they include those findings in our audit. So overall, it was a very clean audit. There was absolutely no fiscal finding. A lot of this is more paper, and this, the paper that they're um, commenting on are not legally required documents, more past practice documents the district has maintained. And we've already begun automating, uh, streamlining. Um, some of these paper documents are not going to continue anymore. Great. I'd, I'd just like to say that, that <clears throat> to commend you, that, that the financial presentations that we've received since you've been... Um, you know, doing our financial presentations have been the clearest and most easy to understand of any I've ever seen. So, so thank, you. thank you very much. I was going to say that as well. I, I appreciate it's a lot to go through all this and for us. So I, I can't imagine how much time it takes you to to set all this up, and especially during all the trauma that we had a year ago. Yeah. So thank you, Maureen. You're welcome. Okay. I just had a question about. Um, just because I'm curious, and I, I've never been audited, how how do they? These are such seemingly random issues that they've found. Mm -hmm. How do they identify which areas they kind of test, or do they have? Do they, does it change every year? Or do they have like a laundry list? Or? There's a state audit guide mm -hmm. that comes out annually. Uh, you can find that on the state controller's uh, website. Um, it's it's huge. So uh, you know they they do random testing. Um, they ask for a um, catalog of documents in um, early June, and they come out and do a preliminary audit at the end of June. And in that um, data collection and in that site visit, they um, select what they're going to come and actually review in October. Hmm. It is completely random. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> Can I get a motion to accept the uh, findings of the annual audit? I move to accept the findings of the 2017-18 annual audit. I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? Yes. I have a question. You and Maureen several times last year. And uh, I have never gotten back any response at all. And that to me says a lot. I mean, keeping silent means a lot to me. It was a mistake about teachers' compensation from, you said it was uh, 8% and uh, it was proven that it was 2%. Rogelio, does this have anything to do with the audit? Y yes, it yeah, does? actually it does, it does. No, with the findings of the audit. Uh, uh, that, because that, that's that's the topic at hand right now. Well, that, that topic in hand uh, re relates it to- It doesn't sound like it relates to the audit. No, no, well, it relates, uh, according to me, it relates. Well, it doesn't, it, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't Just matter. It doesn't matter if if, if, if all four of you are, saying it's not but if well, but the topic at hand no, 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 is, is still, is, still is that, the, that's my opinion we're we're we're, we're no no no, no 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 it can be your opinion you're interrupting me first no, no, of all but no, 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 no. Stop. okay i have stop, a question stop. that has nothing to do with either of these things you guys can work things out and perhaps we can get back to it um under fiscal curricular implications the only question I had is I know that there's a cost to the audit and I wondered I just wondered simply if that should have been included in 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 the the fiscal impact Maybe that would be confusing, though, because it would imply that there had been some fiscal impact from the audit itself. But so the board approved the contract for the auditor three years ago. Already three years ago. Yep. Okay, yep. thank you. Okay, so so we uh, have a motion to, in a second. Um, if there's no pertinent discussion. Mr. Delgado, did you have yeah. any point uh, that Maureen, you wanted to make? I, I'm running the meeting here. Okay. So, I'm just so. well, trying to be polite. Just, I mean, actually, she's doing what, what you are. Uh, Actually, you're doing the same thing. You're interrupting me. No, no, I'm no, asking no, no, you if you. you. I'm asking. Well, no, no, no. Well, well, hold on a sec here. I'm, I'm asking if you have a a, a a discussion item that is pertinent to the approval of the audit. It has yes. no, not not to do with a question you asked a year ago. I'm I'm no, no, I'm, no, I'm, uh, I'm wondering uh, if, if if you have something that's pertinent to this audit. Well, actually, I don't I mean, want you to. No, you, no. This is an opportunity uh, to sit up here and 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 take out some sort of. Well, uh, well, first of all, a grievance uh, towards uh, Mrs. Uh, Fitzgerald. Uh, first of all, leave it to me. Leave it to me. To okay. Well, you can discuss it with her after the meeting. No, no. We're going There's to, nothing we're, to discuss. I, I think mean, someone. It's if uh, you had uh, just let him make his he point, have we would have moved on. I call for the question. All right. Thank well, you. Well. All right. All those in favor of approving the findings of the audit, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All right. Thank you. We'll move on. Uh, item H, Measure U, contract with uh, KI for Art Room Furniture at Carpenter Middle School. Can I get a motion? <clears throat> I move to approve the contract with KI for Art Room Furniture at Carpenteria Middle School. I'll second that. All right, any discussion? Yeah, I, I think with all this Measure U stuff, I think we've continuously ac asked for, uh, was there a bid? on? Was, was the bid included in this? I didn't see it. Perhaps I missed it. No. Was stuff all approved prior? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so. No, it wasn't approved prior. This was not approved prior. This is the first time we've seen of this contract with the with the art room furniture. Oh, first time. Yeah. yeah, I think we've approved other KI yeah. contracts. Yeah, we have not we have not approved this contract yet. That's why it's here. Um, this cost does not exceed the bid threshold. Okay, perfect. That's all. What is the bid threshold? Ninety five thousand. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the contract with KI uh, with KI for art room furniture at the middle school? Say aye. 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 All right. Item H2 is a contract with JMPE Electrical Engineering for services at the uh, um, at Maine. I, I move to approve the contract with JMPE Electrical Engineering for uh, for Children's Project at Maine. I second. 
All right. Any discussion? I just uh, wondering what the lighting was needed for. Oh my gosh! If you've ever been at middle at main school at night, it's seriously dark in that parking lot. So there it's for the park. No it's for the parking lot. There are no lights at the back of the school. Well, I'm guessing it's for the. It's, it's a design. Okay. It's a it's a yeah. design, design firm. They're designing the lighting. They're designing the lighting. The outdoor lighting. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Move on to item I personnel. Um, personnel summary. Can I get a motion to approve? I move to approve the personnel summary. I second. Any discussion? Um, I didn't see, I don't believe I received the attachment on that. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of the, it's part of the, uh, it's, it's a one page. Okay. I won. Does somebody want to just summarize what's on there quickly? Uh, there's a Five, assignments. People. There's four assignments. Um, they're all, uh, they're all classified. Okay. All classified probationary. Oh, there, I just found it. Just found it. Great minds think alike. So, and are these new positions or just replacing uh, outgoing positions? So these are just basically filling openings, existing openings. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further questions? All those in favor of approving the personnel summary, say aye. 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 Okay, move on to uh, <laughs> tenant, oh, item I2, 2017-18, uh, uh, AB 1200 public disclosure of proposed collective bargaining agreement between CUSD and CAUSE. I move to approve the 2017-18 uh, AB 1200 public disclosure of proposed collective bargaining agreement at CUSD and CAUSE. Second. All right, any discussion? I just want to thank all the parties involved. I know this was um, hours and hours of people's lives that went into this. Um, it sounded from the outside, from my point of view, like a reasonably successful and straightforward process and I hope that that um, kind of setting can continue into the new year. I just think it's really important that uh, organizations that have unions work work strongly with them because it, it's beneficial for everybody as we're seeing at the LA Unified School District. I think we're all glad we're not on that board tonight. They're dealing, they're looking at a massive strike. teacher strike. So I think it's no one wants to go there, and good relations are good for everybody. So thank you for everybody that put in so many hours on that. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, item I3, uh, tentative agreements between CUSD and CAUSE. Can I get a motion to approve? I move to approve the tentative agreement between CUSD and CAUSE. Second. All right. Um, any questions? Well, Deanna's going to present some information as the lead negotiator. All right. Thank you, Deanna. We're very pleased to announce that the uh, negotiations have been fully concluded and all contract openers for the classified and certificated employees are now resolved. Um, so we have, um, you should have packets with attached exhibits. Uh, reflecting our signatures and agreement. I just wanted to go through um, the items that are listed here one by one. So first of all, uh, number one, we reached um, agreement on the package proposal 
uh, and um, that was presented May 23rd of 2018. Number two, we reached agreement on the proposed 2018-19 district calendar. Uh, also, that's attached as Exhibit 2. Uh, Article 3 um, and number 3 was on class size. Uh, we reached agreement regarding class size and a new Article 3.7 regarding the EDK um, uh, program. And those things are attached as Exhibit 3. For Item 4, this was related to Article 6. The compensation and benefits. The certificated will receive a 0.5 cost of living increase um, on the salary schedule for 183 work days, and that revises um, our collective bargaining agreement of 7.1.1. The classified will receive a 5% cost of living increase on the salary schedule and no change to benefits for both. The tentative agreements on the salary and benefits is attached as Exhibit 4, and the revised certificated salary schedule and classified salary schedule are also attached as Exhibits 5 and 6, respectively. Item 5, related to Article 7, which is the professional day, we reached a tentative agreement regarding 7.1.1 in the collective bargaining agreement. The work year and a new article, 7.4, related to the instructional day is attached as Exhibit 7. Item 6, related to uh, classified Article 16, and that had to do with training. The tentative agreement regarding Article 16 training is attached as Exhibit 8. Um, item 7 related to Article 18 uh, and dealt with layoff and reemployment following layoff. An agreement titled Proposal to Resolve Classified Layoff Grievance uh, from 8 9 of 2017 is attached as Exhibit 9. Item number 8 had to do with Article 22, that was onboarding, a new Article 22 onboarding for collective bargaining agreement between CUSD and CAUSE is attached as Exhibit 10. And item number nine um, dealt with Article 29 uh, onboarding for collective bargaining agreement um, between Carpentry Association of United School Employees uh, is attached as Exhibit 11. So we're pleased to announce that we reached agreement and um, we appreciate uh, your patience as we move through this process and um, are grateful to the union and all the support that we got um, as well as the board and um, the district um, personnel as well. Great. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Deanna. I appreciate, I think uh, you're the one that made it all come together. I think your demeanor and your your experience and 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 uh, skill um, really was is what you know made this work. So I, I really want to thank you for the effort that you put forth because I know it was challenging it, it pretty much throughout the whole whole process. So thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate your support and also uh, just a quick shout out to Superintendent Rigby for all of your support in going through the process and um, allowing me the necessary um, responsibilities and um, being able to work as lead negotiator you gave me a lot of room to do that and I appreciate that you're welcome okay um, we have a motion and a second uh, any further discussion all those in favor aye. 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 aye all right okay we'll move on to board communications uh, Maureen You have anything, Maureen? Yeah, I'm just gathering my thoughts here. Um, I just want to start by saying um, I guess just uh, want to kind of put my thoughts out to all the people that were affected by the mudslide. Last year, tomorrow is the anniversary. And uh, there wasn't a single person in Carpentry who wasn't touched by that. Uh, our freeways were closed. We were cut off. And um, I think what will always stay with me, though, is the feeling of collaboration 
and unity and um, the spirit of pulling together with neighbors, friends, strangers, to work on something that was more important than uh, just one individual. And we had to. It wasn't even a choice. It was just, you know, on that morning I woke up with mud (coughs) in my front yard about a foot deep and met people I had never known lived down the street from me because they had tractors and things to be able to help dig us out. So I think tomorrow is going to be, tomorrow's the first day back for students. It's kind of a challenging first day for some of our students who were affected by things. And um, I wish that we that hospice or somebody was going to be there for them or, or that we had hospice more in the schools because I know for myself personally the impact, some of the impacts are just starting to get felt now. So um, anyways, there's not really too much to say. I know there's a community memorial in uh, Montecito that I'm hoping to attend. And um, as far as I know, there's not anything in Carpinteria though, which seems a little odd to me. But um, it was just a day that our family, unfortunately, will never forget and a day that I'm sure probably none of us will ever forget. So I just um, just want to kind of, if we can maybe take take that unity that we felt a year ago out of the kind of darkness and maybe work with it tomorrow. And, um, you know, I, I think that's the best that we can do, right? To take, to take something positive from something that was so bad. That's all. Great, thank you. Rogelio. Uh, yes. <coughs> Last board meeting, I talked about uh, agent dicing, put on put it on the agenda, having our board meetings at our school sites, and uh, I mentioned that at the workshop that we attended, uh, Maureen and, your, Maureen and I, two years ago or so, out of eighteen, nineteen school districts, <coughs> only ours was not held other schools and uh, now we we have to move somewhere else I don't know for how long Mm -hmm. correct no no No, this this room is available okay it's available well still okay (coughs) we pay money over here and uh, I think that we I'm sure that we would better serve our community, our students, our kids, having these uh, board meetings where they belong, at school sites, high school, middle school. And uh, I mentioned that we didn't <coughs> actually have in this on, uh, on TV doesn't help at all. I mentioned that uh, we had very few views and I pull out eight pages. Last last board meeting we had 89 views. On November we had 99. October we had 55. Then we had four views, one view, one view, three views. Uh, one view, three views, seven views, and so on. So that's my point. Not too many people are watching this. That's probably on YouTube, though. Well, that's the basis. Hmm. That's the basis of this. And uh, that that's my thought. And... Uh, it's not only my thought. I, some people have been talking to me, talking about teachers. That's probably that, that's that, that that that's why parents are not here. That's why it's teachers are not here. Let's give it a try. I don't know how long we have this contract with the city, but as soon as it's over, I mean, <laughs> it's would be worthwhile to try it. Why not? I don't know who's, uh, whose idea was this, but uh, this school, uh, this board meetings do not belong here. They belong at the, where they should be at school sites. Santa Barbara. I mean, every school, every school district has it at their, at their own school sites. Why not us? And uh, 
also uh, couldn't find uh, last year's organization, organizational uh, committees. I couldn't find them. I couldn't find that meeting on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, so I was wondering about that, uh, talking about that the process of uh, electing committees was quite different the way it was handled uh, last week. It was last month. I mean, it was done. It wasn't done properly. So I'm, I'm still gonna double check on that, triple check on that, on everything. And uh, that's that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate what <coughs> Diana said in regards to the community helping us, and especially with this. I saw the article in the middle school about the um, skate board competition they put out there and I really appreciate especially at the middle school level that parents are yeah. starting to be involved with it and try something different or unique and I just hope that it continues on and that we all embrace all of our schools all right thank you Sally um, right before school ended I uh, once again did interviews for the get focused stay focused class at the high school mm -hmm. um, it's ninth grade students um, it's in conjunction with partners in education they solicit business people to come into the high school and interview the ninth grade students it's a part of their um, final grade they have to come in nicely dressed shake hands um, and we ask them what job they're applying for it is a very rewarding, very fun um, event, and I encourage anybody and everybody to do it. It's just a matter of asking some questions and interviewing them. Um, it's a real eye-opener because when you see those students again at the 12th grade level, they've changed big time. Yes. So have. it's very fun. Mm -hmm. My other comment is that as I walk up and down Franklin Trail, um, I love how many more parents and students are using that trail. Uh, early in the morning, there's a whole group of women, Jackie, um, that after their students are dropped off, they go and hike the trail. At 4.30 in the afternoon, there's a whole group of families that go up and down after they've all been at work all day. And I think we as a community ought to really be thankful that trail's there because I think we're getting healthier because of it. So thank you. Great. Thanks, Sally. I think it was the trail, the, the district was a big part of that too. I think so. you know, yeah. with, yes. with the access through the yes. district property. Yes, through the property. Um, I'd just I'd like to put a little promotional thing out here for the hundredth anniversary of the Russell Cup coming up in April, and I'm part of a committee that's that's organizing that, and and um, we're gonna we're, we're there's gonna be an effort to reach out to the middle school and the elementary schools, and um, have a preliminary competition with with those uh, with all the sites, and then the top. The top performers from each of those sites is going to be able to compete on Wonderful. the day of Russell Cup. Wonderful. So um, I, I'd just like to put that out there, mm -hmm. everyone who's listening. Um, Diana and I are going to coordinate and uh, with the print, with the site site leaders and and uh, really kick that off. And hopefully we'll we'll generate a lot more interest in track and field in the community, but also f especially for the hundredth anniversary. It's the longest running. Um, uh, high school track meet in uh, the state if not I don't think it's the country but in the state for sure wow. so all right um, board calendar so I do want to remind you that next Tuesday night will be held at the district office conference room okay, yes. okay. yeah and it's four four to eight p.m. for the board workshop board workshop yes four to eight yep and then we have uh, budget study sessions uh, for this year are on uh, Tuesday the 29th here. Yes. Correct? So all the budget study sessions will be here yes. at the City Hall. Um, Tuesday the February 19th, Tuesday March 19th, and Tuesday April 30th. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, and then future agenda items, we have uh, a sea level rise presentation by the City of Carp and a WASC, Western Association of Schools and Colleges report presentation coming up sometime soon. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to make it to that January 29th meeting, and this is the first I've heard of it. 
No, it's been on the agenda. It's been on the agenda? Yes. Well, um, so there you go. Okay. I don't know if there's going to be, are there any other one, anyone else who's missing on that day? Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Another comment. I want, I want to attend that workshop. The, the which, the but next the, week? Uh, the 15. You won't be at the, at the, at the board, board Correct. Board yeah, workshop? I didn't approve it. So if I didn't approve it, then that means that, uh, I, I won't go. Well, well, yeah. well, that's disappointing because it's going to no. be very helpful. Well, that's, it I mean, I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, I talked for about 10, 15 minutes last time. Yeah, that's too bad because it, it, it's, it's been on the schedule for, well, for about three uh, months. Uh, that, I don't want to repeat myself. I talked okay. about it uh, for a long time. That's too bad. I think you benefit from it, Rogelio. Well, we actually, no, uh, no, actually, I, uh, <laughs> well, I, I said it, I, I, I didn't approve it, so uh, that no means no, and, uh, I, and yeah. actually, this, uh, I actually, this, I was there two years ago or so, it is, it is the same workshop. It was a year ago. It, no. About it. it was, it was right no. after we hired No, it was not. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. right. I don't think this is, I don't think a discussion, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. probably shouldn't have a discussion because there's nothing on the agenda about a discussion Correct. around the. Okay. okay. All right. Right. Okay. With that, uh, I think we're adjourned. Oh, Thank I you actually, uh, future agenda items. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There, um, are actually our board bylaws, 9130 said, uh, excuse me, um, 9322 that says that, um, Agenda requests shall be heard if circumstances permit at the next regular board meeting, but not later than the third meeting. So we have just been flagrantly well, kind of disregarding. Permit, so. No, but it says, but not later well, than if we, the third But if we can't board align, if we can't, we can't force people to come. No, of course not. But I think that's, if that's, then maybe we should update our bylaw to reflect reality. But um, I have. We could pull I this, have, we could pull those items. I have three different um, things that I actually asked for last time that didn't appear, so I'm going to ask for them again. And I would like to start looking at some of our board bylaws because they're incredibly, they're even more out of date than our board policies. So um, I wanted to look at board compensation, which is a board policy, and um, board committees, which is 9130. Well, and I think then board the compensation, we should discuss that at a budget study session. That's a budget item. Uh, I'm asking for it to be an agenda item and um, a, under policy uh, a policy study uh, policy but uh, item and then uh, district uh, what I asked for last time that again didn't appear is uh, looking at a district translator and an analysis of legal fees yes they'll all be agenda eyes for the budget study session all of these items will be yes because um, board compensation and benefits is a budget item Hiring a district translator is a budget item, and the legal fees are all budget items. So okay, on January 29th, we will review all three. I would like to, con I appreciate that, and I'm glad we're gonna get to them. However, the um, board, board policies are not, you know, there might be some fiscal uh, side effects, but I'm requesting that they be agendized under policy, please. You're asking to review the board policy associated with board compensation. Board benefits. compensation and, and board bylaw 9130. Yeah, but district um, translator is not a board yeah, policy. Yeah, so there's there's two board bylaws and two um, agenda items, which I, I would like to see as agenda items, not as not strictly in terms. Like if we're looking, I'm just I don't want to have a discussion right now because that's not appropriate. I'm simply asking them for them to be agenda items. Okay, so the superintendent, uh, excuse me, yeah. the the president of the board and I will discuss the request. Fine and determine the best time to um, discuss those Fine. items. And same thing with uh, uh, board meetings that are taking place at school sites. Yes. I, I, I we are not holding, but I, we've already responded. Yeah. We are not gonna hold board meetings at school sites. They are, we're gonna continue yeah. through the city hall. Um, we've already, we've already, I've already responded to that. Yeah. One why is He's that? He's asking for it to be an agenda uh, yeah, item, I mean, and, and we, that's a request. I mean, it's so not, okay, we'll, it's we'll, not we'll, just your opinion. I it, will it, discuss it with, with the superintendent and, and decide. We'll determine whether or not we're going to put it on the agenda. Because we also have budget study sessions. We have other meetings that potentially could rotate that we use the district office for. So. All right. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you.